this God. All right. All right. I'm going to tell you right now, I just want to say it like it is. In order for us to get to where we need to be in this season, where God is trying to deliver you and give you what you need, it's going to require you to push. Oh, Lord. It's going to require you to push out of your comfort zone. That bed might feel too good to you, but it's going to require you to push out of that bed. To get into a prostate position so that God can move to where you want him to move and do what you're requesting him to do. It's requiring you to push in this season. Because I'm telling you, God is available. God is ready. God is willing. God is wanting. But all you got to do is push, Lord, have mercy. And when God got us today, man, in a message, he pushed me. And he's going to push you today, Lord, have mercy. He's going to push you in an area where you don't even realize he's going to push you. That same thing that you got hidden, oh, he's going to push you there. That same thing that you've been hiding, he's going to touch you there. That same thing that's holding you back, he's going to go ahead and he's going to move something this morning. Because he's giving me confirmation. So you better get ready. Because God's going to push you today. He's going to push you in his word. He pushed the praise team out of their comfort zone. He pushed those who came before the prayer. He's going to push me today to give you what you need. God is going to push you into a place that is uncomfortable for you. He's going to push you. But the best thing about him pushing you is that the results that he will get from you. Yeah. I, I just love godly results. Do, do you like godly results in your life? You ain't the same person that you used to be. Certain things that will irritate you and certain things that will push you into a place. You ain't the same person, even if your wheel was coming off. Come on, y'all know what I'm saying. You ain't the same person. You would have told some stuff up back in the day. Yeah. But the Spirit of God held you. My Jesus. I said, peace be still. giving you the solution to your 
miss you. You miss them. that stands in front of your people today that I stand in a position of John. And I take your actual word, the mystery of your faith, God, with the illumination, God, and the confirmation, God, and the actual inspiration of your word, God, to allow me to impart it into your people today as I decrease and you increase and they don't see me, but they hear you. God, allow your voice to be reverent and clear and make sure that they hear it, God, because they have an ear to hear. But not only do they hear it, they apply God and they demonstrate it, God, after they leave this place. Because when they actually leave this place, they will not be the same as they came. So, God, I just thank you right now for giving me this word for your people, God, and this assignment that you put stored on me, God, to be able to hear you clearly in this season to give your people what they need. Yes. We ask this in the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, our Redeemer, our King of Kings, and our Lord of Lords. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray today. Ah, yes, indeed. Coming from the Gospel according to John this morning, out of the Bibles that many people claim to be the only Bible in the actual form of actual, uh, I would say, Hebrew Greek language, the King James Version, 1611. If you don't have a Bible, you can pull it out of the pews that say that you're seated at it. There are Bibles there that you can utilize today. If you have any type of smart devices, you can use the smart devices as we get ready to embed into this message and this assignment that God has for me to give to you today. John 5th chapter, you find yourself there in a very familiar scripture. But God is going to give you a different perspective because you probably heard it preached time after time. John the 5th chapter, coming from the 1st to the ninth verse. And this is the word of God as it has been spoken and written down. One thing before I move forward, you'll find out that if you're using any other version Bible, that being the NIV, the New Central Version, the New American Standard Version, you will find a particular verse missing. I believe that verse will probably be verse 4, and where that verse is not there. The reason why that verse is in the King James, you'll find that in the King James Version of the Bible, that that, ver that verse is in an actual italicized. side. Meaning it's italicized, meaning that that scripture has been disputed by many people in the modern scriptures reading of the Bible. But in the old way, they can't really find, uh, confirm uh, uh, any significant reason why that scripture is valid to be placed in. However, King James Version leaves that scripture there and don't dispute the actual word of God because you have to realize that though this word of God is a word that we trust and believe in, it was man that read it. Man read this thing and put it into place. And sometimes man makes mistakes. Amen. But it doesn't mean that God made a mistake. Let me make this clear. Sometimes God can tell you to do something. You can still do the opposite. And so in this actual thing, it's not a mistake in the Bible, it's just it was admitted out of many of the modern translations. And so I will go to the King James Version today. So if you don't see it in your Bible, that's the reason why it's not there. John 5, 1 and 9 goes as written, says after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem, by the sheep market of pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of infinite folks, a blind, 
halted, withered, those who are paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Some of y'all been waiting on water for years. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Meaning the individual who got there first was the one who got the blessing. I'm going to talk to you about that. And a certain man was there, this man which had an infirmity, 38 years. 38 years this man was placed there. And he's lying there. And when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, what thou be made whole? That's critical. The impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step down before me. Jesus said unto him, rise, take up that bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. I want to take these seven scriptures, but my focus scripture today is that this verse number five, and a certain man was there which had an infirmity, and thirty and eight years. And when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now there a long time in that case, he said to him, Would thou be made whole? Do you want to get well? I won't take that set of scripture. Have you go ahead and take your seat in the presence of the Lord and expound on these scriptures. God told me to ask you this morning, you and I, families and guests, what's your next move? Uh, what your next move? That's what he wanted me to ask you this morning. He's waiting on you to make a move in this season. What will be your next move? There is an unseen struggle that lies within all of us that are seated here today. At some level, we're dealing with a struggle that even when we know that we should be moving in a certain direction, we are held up by our indecisions to move away from something or someone that has kept us in a holding pattern for years. The question though is that what we fail to often ask ourselves is, why should we hesitate in doing something better for ourselves? Even when we already know that when we move in that direction, it will allow us to reach what we have been trying to achieve for years. And the answer to that question is that many people are unaware that their hesitation happens when an unconscious conflicts develop. Oh. Your hesitation happens when an unconscious conflict develop. Meaning when you're in a season of hesitation, it is unusually caused by the development of two opposed beliefs even when one of them was not apparent to you. Let me help you out. Because see, when there is an unconscious belief that we are unaware of, it can take control over our decisions. Because our hesitation is based on fear. And because of that fear, we start to believe that we're not good enough or even smart enough to be at a certain level. Oh, Y'all get what I'm saying? Yeah. Meaning you can want to move forward with your life, but what you feel, which is your fear, is telling you that your life won't become any better because you lack the ability to maintain yourself at that level that you're trying to achieve, 
even if you choose to try. See, fear will show up every time that you're not willing to address it. Okay. Which will affect you from going and growing into who you are supposed to become in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can help you expound on this a little deeper. In July of 2010, at the age of 75, Marjorie Elliott of Orange County conquered her fear. She conquered her fear by becoming one of the oldest people ever to receive a high school diploma. All right. Marjorie was pulled out of school at the age of 14 years old to help support her family because she was always intended to go back to finish school one day, but there was not enough money in the household for her to be able to stop working to help support her family. So in 1964, she and her husband divorced. And Marjorie was left to raise her three daughters on the income of a high school dropout. Mm -hmm. And for the next three years without her husband, she raised her kids on minimum wage with no child support, no after school program to assist her while she worked. Y'all ain't hearing me. And she said it was very difficult when they were little because she was not intelligent enough to even help them with their homework. Lord have mercy. So she put all of her resources in getting tutors for her girls to determine that they would get the actual uh, education that they need to be able to get to the level that they were supposed to be on and maintain in school. And in the year 2008, Marjorie was laid off from her job. And her daughters had all grown up and graduated. And Marjorie decided the time had come to finally achieve her goal of getting her high school diploma. It was very difficult for her as she had to struggle to keep up with the other students to learn things that they already knew, such as how to use a computer. But she persevered and ultimately graduated with a 4.0 GPA. Meaning if a divorced mother with three kids working for minimal wage can go back to school and enter college, what is your excuse today for making your next move? Because the Bible says that in Jeremiah 29 and 11, God already knows the plan that he has for you. Plans for you to prosper. Plans that won't harm you. Plans to give you hope and a better future. And God told me to ask you today, EEI, what's your next move? What is your next move? Because there is no, there is no longer any excuses that he's accepting from you. He only wants to see you in action. Because this is a season that you become a James 1 and 22 Christian. Oh, you ain't got it? He says, don't just be a hearer of my word. You must do what it says, otherwise you're only fooling yourself. Y'all ain't here. Yeah. He says, I don't want you to sit here complaining about what I've already given you permission to achieve. I don't want someone to keep preaching you every Sunday, every Monday, every Wednesday about what I've already promised to give you. Yeah. What I need for you to do in this season is to move into what I've already ordained for your life. Right so what is your next move? What is holding you up? Because of a 75 year old woman who's divorced, who's dropped out of school, minimum wages, can raise three daughters and go back to school and get a high school diploma in her college. Then what is standing in your way this morning? Yes, yes, yes. What could be standing in your way? And many of us got to get to that place. Because in this text this morning, we have a man that has been in a situation for 38 years. Yeah. And this man was in a hopeless state. And although he'd been in this condition for 38 years, we do not know how long he'd been lying by the pool. Nobody knows. All we know is that his condition was so bad that he could never get into the pool in the time that he wanted to be healed. Oh, watch 
house this. And there may be someone that has been in the actual condition for so long, trying to figure out what is your next move for your life. And today God wants me to speak to anyone and anything that seems like you're about to be able every time you try to get back on your feet, every time you go ahead and make that next move, every time you try to push into that direction, he wants me to speak to you and let you know that guess what? That there's nothing going to be standing in your way in this season. Right. Because your next move that you make, here's your shout, is going to set you up for life. Y'all all in here, here. The next move that you make in your life is going to set you up for life. Yes. And I need someone to claim that this morning. Because you're about to make a move. Yeah. But this move it's going to be the most critical move of your life. And it's going to set you up for life. My God. And he gave me three things you got to be cautious of when you're making that next move. All right. He said, so when you're preparing to make that next move, God told me to tell you to make sure that you don't have a faulty belief system. Oh, Lord have mercy. You, 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 you can't have a faulty belief system. You see it in verse 6 and 7. It says, when Jesus saw this man lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked the man, do you want to get well? But look at his response in verse 7. He says, I don't have anyone to help me to get into the pool. Lord have mercy. You ask the man, I already know your condition. I already know what you're dealing with. He asked him, 38 years you've been setting this thing. And I'm standing right here, and I say, do you want to get well? And the first thing you come out your mouth, that you won't have anyone to help you to get into the pool. See, you missed it. Uh -huh. See, you can only live at the level of your belief system. You can only live at the level of your belief system. Uh -huh. Meaning when God requires you to move into something better for your life, it's not going to taste the same as what you have been used to tasting. Oh, wow. 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 See, you still missed it. You missed it. Wow. Many people only have conflicts in their life when what they believe in keeps them from reaching what they have been trying to reach their entire life. Y'all in here, in here. And the reason why is that they have become so accustomed to the taste of what average tastes like that when God offered them something above average, here it is, what is average conflicts with what is above average. You ain't got it? And it causes them to turn right back to what was normal and has never taken them to above normal. God says in this season, I'm trying to take you above normal, but you have to taste what you've been eating and feeding yourself on in this season. Because you got a faulty belief system. Because see, comfort does not taste the same as discomfort. That's right. What is comfortable for you doesn't taste the same as what's uncomfortable for you. And when God is developing us, it may require us to change what we've been eating. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. To live a lifestyle that is far better than what you're living right now. You ain't got it yet? Let me go by or let me give you scripture because some of you are looking at me like I said, what are you talking about? Hebrews 5, 13 and 14. Go to the text yourself. Hebrews 5, 13 and 14 puts it this way. He says, someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Come on. But solid food, Lord have mercy, that good food, solid food is for those who are mature. Those who are through training have the skill to recognize the difference between what is right for their life and what is wrong for their life. God says, I'm trying to shift you from over the milk of the word to give you some meat in this world so that I can change your life yeah. in this world. Yeah. And the difference between your last food and your next food is that you have to be willing to grow through what makes you uncomfortable. 
You have to be willing to grow through it and not turn back to what makes you comfortable. That's what our issue is. So that you can live on a level far greater than you're currently living. Every time God tries to push you on a level that is higher, you move back to what's comfortable for you because it doesn't taste good for you. Because you're used to the taste of what average tastes like. And when it's not average, it tastes different. And so because it's your taste buds and your spiritual enlightenment is not used to it, you fight against it. Oh, have mercy. God says, I'm trying to push you to see. Let me see if I can make this plain. You can't keep believing in the same people who have never kept their words and has never shown any evidence that they will keep their word because that is a faulty belief system. You can't keep believing in it. Meaning, if you're not where you want to be, if you're not who you think you should be by now, if you are not at the place that you should have been by now, then take a closer look at the people that you have been putting in your trust in because you could be attached to a faulty belief system. Mama. That's why you're not there. You're trusting in something that can't produce to even take you there so that your standard of living is so low because you're in love with a standard that is low. It's your belief system. Wow. Let me help you out. If a person can't help elevate you, then why are you still with them? Yeah. If a person can't help push you to the next level, then why are you selling for it? You're in a belief system that can't even take you from an average system and you've been stuck in this thing for years. Because the only reason that this man was in this situation for 38 years was all because of what he believed in that kept him there. That's right. And it's what you believe in right now. In your next move, that if you don't change the belief system, it's going to keep you in the same place. And every new year, we come and pack the church to I give us a word for New Year's. A New Year's resolution. And you still stuck to the same faulty system that don't take you no further. It don't make no difference for you down the road. And until you change from that faulty belief system, it's not going to help you in your next move, God told me. You're going to be seeing the same results, the same thing. And you're wondering why it ends on me. Because you're stuck to something that can't take you there. And you know it can't take you there. But you're not willing to move. See, let me help you out. Wow. Um, many people are only confined to the walls that they have built up in their minds. Uh -huh. You're only confined to the walls that you have built up in your minds. Because you believe in someone or something that has never lived up to what they say that they could provide for you. Oh my God. Oh my God. And you build it up in your mind that this thing is going to work for you and you still don't see no results of it. Wow. Because it's faulty. Wow. And when you have a mind of Christ, this is when God will begin to rewire your way of thinking. When you have a mind of Jesus, he'll start rewinding you, rewinding your mind, reprogramming you into a process of understanding. Guess what? How did I stay in this thing so long? God, look at here. You've been showing me stuff for years, and I've been sitting there fighting this thing, and not realizing that I've been faithful to something that hasn't been lucrative to me. I've been faithful to something that couldn't even elevate me. I've been committing to something, and I've been bamboozled. I was in something that was faulty 
but was not built on your word. The word of God will do what it says it will do. But people will disappoint you all the time. My God, my God. And it's time for you to start rewiring your mind and have a mind of Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to begin to reprogram you from what was faulty in your life, what was faulty in your mind, to believe in a God that is far superior that he will blow your mind. I don't know who I'm talking here, but God's not ready to blow your mind. But all you got to do is have the mind of Jesus so I can blow your mind. But I don't care what you somebody told you or somebody said to you. God said, I'm about to blow your mind in your season if you leave that system alone. A faulty belief system hadn't accomplished nothing. You've given them your best, haven't done anything for you. So you got to become the first Corinthians 2 and 9 mind. Meaning, uh, where that system is like this it says, uh, uh, Your eyes are not seen, <laughs> you, your ears are not heard. And now has it in the actual heart of man that the things that God has prepared for them. Who loves him? See, that's the system that you're a part of. But we allow folks to drag us into a system of poverty. That's what he wants. And to make progress in your life, you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And your belief system plays a major part in that. It does. Because this man lived this way all because he believed that way. Yeah. He lived that way because he believed that way. And the reason why so many people of God live beneath the standards that God has for them is because they don't believe that their life can get any better. Because you believe that way. You allow folks to restore their faulty way of thinking. And believe on you when you have a mind of Christ that is far superior of what they're trying to impart in you. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You're not the tail. You're the head. Yeah. Jesus. You're not a bar. You're a lender. Yeah. You got to understand what your DNA is spiritually. God is saying that I came to have, you came to have life more abundantly. But you're settling for life in the world that is faulty. When God gave you dominion over everything in the world. Do you want to see the text? He says that I made you and gave you dominion over everything. But you're living beneath the dominion So he had to compete with everyone who was dead. Lord have mercy. 
to get into the position to receive his healing. I'm going somewhere. So I don't want you to miss this. Watch this. Jesus was not interested in helping this man to be the first person in line to get into the pool. That's right. That's right. That's right. Jesus did not address this man's position That's right. in the line. Y'all ain't hear me. Jesus was only interested in healing this man uh -huh. and removing him so that he would no longer have to wait and be in line at the pool. Lord have mercy. Y'all ain't hear me. Here's your shout. God told me to tell someone today that your next move will take you from a season of waiting to a position of appointment. Lord have mercy. He says, you don't need to be waiting no more because I'm going to place you in it. Y'all don't know where to shout. God says, you've been sitting here waiting behind these people all your life for the next position when he says, I'm going to appoint you in the position. Thank you, Paul. Get out of the line. God saw 
to what other people are competing against you for. Yes. Thank you, God. It's God in place. A place in there. Nobody can't move you. Yeah. We'll take a story and move on close. I was put in a position on the base about 12 years ago and um, as the base security manager. I was put in a position and this guy who was in the position had 22 years of experience. 22 years. I got in a position when I got there. Watch this. They were only there. The security manager, the assistant security manager was only there for one week left. When I walked in, this guy looked at me and told me, don't ask me for my phone number. I ain't going to help you because the only reason they put you here was to see if they could fire you. And I ain't trying to help you and do nothing because I'm retiring on Friday. That's what he told me. This was Monday right there. I'm getting hit with this. But yeah, this is what he told me also. He said, don't you go and sit back in that office, which was a security manager office, because you ain't qualified. Ah. He said, you stay right out here as a clerk, and you tend to those folks. Now, this nigga about to leave. Right, right, right. And he telling me how to work. Yeah. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, I'm taking this thing. I'm saying, okay, 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 I got it, I got it. So I ain't saying nothing to him. I ain't saying nothing to him. I left for that. And see, peace be still. I ain't said nothing to him. So there was another guy in there. And his name, I ain't gonna say his name. But anyway, he was there and he was saying, uh, uh, Mr. Floyd, uh, uh, let me help you out. I'm gonna help you uh, because I want three ways, he said. I'm retired this week too, but whatever you need, I'm gonna give you my number. You can call me uh -huh. and do all of that. And I'm gonna help you to be able to get in this position to be successful. I said, I appreciate that. And so this guy left. This guy helped me. And about two weeks, we were sitting there, and um, after two weeks, I stopped calling him. He wondered why I stopped calling him. Because my next move was all about getting in the books and getting the policies and start reading it for myself. And I found out that all the things that they were doing, half of it was illegal. <laughs> and so watch this now. It's like, God bless you now. A guy from headquarters Marine Corps, me and a good friend right today, came down and said that this guy was a piece of trash. He said, let me take you under your wings, under my wings, and I'm going to teach you for the next two, three days, and I'm going to give you everything that he knew. And so God sent this man down, and he showed me and he grew me, and we're close friends every day. Anytime I need something, I call and reach out to him, because he's the headquarters, and I always contact him and see if there's something. But that ain't even the story. This is where it gets real good for you. Because there's a point to this thing. Let me tell you about appointment. See, God was only setting me up for my next move. Y'all can hear me. The position that I'm currently in right now has oversight over three other security managers. One in actual Jacksonville, Florida. The other one's in Boston, California. The other one is locally here. So I'm the head man setting in. But how did I get the position? This is how I got the position. I applied for it after one year being in the position. One year's experience, and all these other people had multiple experience. Don't you know the same guy who said that, oh, I ain't got no time for you. Don't say nothing to me. They want you to get fired. Was the same guy I competed against. Lord have mercy. I'll tell you how good God is. And what happened was that there was only three names left after the 10 man served. And my name was one of them, his name was one of them, and somebody else was one of them. And the man said, can I choose this guy? And that guy was me. Y'all ain't hearing me here. And after one year of experience, God allowed me to elevate because he appointed me over someone who had over 20 years of experience. I'm here to tell you right now, you ain't got to fight for it when you're anointed. God will place you in a appointed place because you are anointed. And I've been placed by God there and have been in this position until probably 2026 20, when I retire. And I got folks hating on me yet today. But the problem is that they didn't put me there. Because when God placed you there, he's going to always come here. When God placed you there, he's always going to put a head protection around you. When God puts you there, he's going to let everyone know that guess what? You are untouchable in this season. Because I believe in a 
system that's not faulty. That's right. And when you believe in these faulty systems, when you really got a battle on your hands, in the workplace, in your family, on your job, dealing with certain people, you're going to really need a God that's going to intercede on your behalf. And so, I was overlooked by a man. Yeah. But they don't even know that I was the next day that was going to be appointed by God. Yeah. And I tell folks that story all the time. When I see folks fighting and struggling, tell them my resume didn't do this, my resume, that, that, that ain't got nothing to do. God is the one who set people up. And God's the one who removed them. Yeah. It ain't about your resume, it's about who you serve. That's right. We got to see people with least experience and still excel in positions. And I've seen people with much experience to keep getting overlooked and complaining about the system is broke. But it ain't the system, it's what you believe in that is broke. Trust in the Lord in all that you do. Lean not on your own understanding and knowledge and in all that ways that he will direct your path. That's what the scripture said. That's what his word says. And that's what we have to apply in our life. So God said, what is your next move? What is your next move? So let me get out of here. Promise you I gotta get out of here. About all over my time. Got communion. Um, point number three is this. Um, don't miss the hand of God in your next move. You can't miss the hand of God in your next move. What's often missed in verse 7 when Jesus asked this man if he wanted to be healed instead of him simply saying yes watch this he blames his lack of healing on others he complains that no one was there to help him to get into the pool he also blames other people for getting in his way ain't that like us that we do right but what was really missed is that the man next move was standing right in front of him. <laughs> His next move was standing in front of him. Meaning, he was so focused on his misfortunes that he failed to interpret what Jesus had said to him. Even though Jesus was right in front of him. See, I think the problem with the church today is not the information, but the interpretation of the information. And we have to learn how to interpret the Word of God with knowledge and understanding to apply to our life to see the difference in our life. Your interpreter is the Holy Spirit. Oh, have mercy. I've often told people in scriptures this, that there's a scripture in the Bible that I would read all the time and I gave the wrong interpretation. And all type of stuff started breaking out in my life and I was wondering that whatever man thinks, so is he. And I put that thing on my social media page and I said, this is the year. Whatever I think I'm going to accomplish. Taking the scripture out of context doesn't change the intention of what God meant for it to be. God does not change his interpretation when we misinterpret the scripture. Can I help someone here? See, the scripture dealt with the fact of someone who had an issue with you. Read it for yourself. See, I took the actual, uh, I would say the top of the bread, but I love the meat and the actual other part of the bread. The scripture was talking about someone who really sat there and gave you their best presentation, but really despise you. Whatever a man thinketh, so is he. All right. Meaning what this person thought about you wasn't a true presentation of what that person really cared about you. Come on. And so I was wondering why I was in a position in my life that I was dealing with so much hate and discard. Because the scripture that I placed was actually revealing to me the people who really didn't have my best interests. Oh, that mercy. And you have to be careful because, watch this, this man was standing there, 
focus on his misfortunes when Jesus gave him the only interpretation that he needed. All he needed was a response of yes. And God told me to tell each and every one of you today to don't be so focused on what is wrong in your life that you miss out on the next move that he wants to do in your life. Because the next move will bring you out of everything that you have been fighting against. The next move will bring you out of everything that has, you've been praying so hard for. Your next move will bring you out of everything that has been keeping you up in bondage for weeks, for months, and for years. Because even when your life looks like he's not present, he is present. Waiting on you to just say yes to what will be happening next in your life. So what is your next move this morning, E.D.I.? God saying that I want you to understand and I'm waiting for a yes out of you. I'm standing in front of you in your presence and all you have to do is tell me yes. Because soon as this man told Jesus yes, what happened? The Bible says what could have happened in verse 6 and 7 could have already happened. It says immediately, Lord have mercy. Can I help someone? Immediately God is about to shift your situation and your circumstance. All you got to do is give him a yes this morning. You want to come out of what you're in? You want to come out of the stuff that's holding you? You want to come out of this bondage that's trying to manipulate you? Give God a yes. So I'm standing right in front of you. But do you believe in me? Do you want to be healed this morning? Say yes. Yes, Lord, God. This man could have solved all his problems. You can solve all your issues right now with a simple yes. Two yes, son. All you need is a yes. He wants a yes from you. A yes from you. See if you can find that song, yes. He wants a yes from you. That's what he wants from you. If you are going to do anything in this season, in your next move, he wants you to tell him yes. Yes to his will. Yes to his way. All God requires is a yes. If this man would have given Jesus a yes, his story would have already been over. Would have been over. All God wants is a yes. All he wants is a yes from you. So who wants to come out of that place of brokenness today? What's your next move? Are you gonna stay where you are? Are you gonna come to a place of yes? Who's gonna stay there and believe in what they've been broken in? Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. Is there anyone? Is there anyone who wants to come to a Savior that has everything that can fix your problems? It's proven. Yes. Come on, y'all. He wants a yes from you this morning. He I. And guess, if you want this to be your next home, I want to be your pastor. I want to show you what a yes means. I don't know what anybody else taught you, but I'm here to tell you, God is ready to transform your life. For you to live at a level that you've never lived before, to be a person that you've never been before, and to stop coming up with excuses because he's ready to open up the door in your heart to get you to where you need to be. Yes, Lord. He's waiting on you. He's tugging on your heart. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you anything. Thirty-eight years this man lived like that. How long are you gonna keep 
keep living a faulty lifestyle that's not beneficial to you, your family, your kids. You don't have a future. God wants to move you to something better today. What's your next move? What is your next move today? I promise you he's got a better move for you. A better move for you. So 